This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to talk about Finance Guy meets Bitcoin. I still have this head cold, so please excuse my voice for this episode. Finance Guy, also known as at Guy Talks Finance, sharing opinions on Twitter about money and good financial health, index investor, building wealth debt free. He seems to have a problem with Bitcoin though. His latest post, Bitcoin is backed by U.S. dollars. Without U.S. dollars, Bitcoin is worthless. If you don't believe me, just ask yourself, what is Bitcoin valued at right now? When I asked myself that, it actually came through in euros. So I think Bitcoin might actually be backed by euros instead. Or perhaps Bitcoin is backed by the 30 plus fiat currencies in which Bitcoin is currently passing all-time highs. According to Finance Guy, there are two questions that Americans cannot answer. That's what is the price of a Baconator? Also, what is Bitcoin? So I wanted to help out Finance Guy. Baconator, currently in Denver, costs $6.49. This is a bacon cheeseburger from Wendy's. In terms of what is Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the best money that the world has ever seen. It's a verifiably scarce digital asset that rides on a global, decentralized, permissionless, peer-to-peer -peer network. Bitcoin is basically freedom money. It's money that's not issued or captured or controlled by governments, corporations, or insiders. And Bitcoin allows anyone to store value and send value without being debased or censored. What's more impressive, Bitcoin has a market cap of currently of about 1.2 trillion. It's the best performing asset of the past decade. And I think those are two good reasons to show at least a little intellectual humility or curiosity when approaching it. If you're enjoying this video so far, I just ask you to hit the subscribe button. That really does help out the channel. Leave a like, comment, and share this video as well. When Finance Guy asserted that Bitcoin is backed by US dollars, Crypto Ninja here replied, read the white paper, read a book, maybe start with a Bitcoin standard. Finance Guy's response, it's funny, I've never had to read the instruction manual on US dollars or my iPhone, but they work. It seems that Finance Guy is a big fan of Berkshire Hathaway. He often tweets about it. Unfortunately for Finance Guy, it looks like Bitcoin now has a larger market cap than Berkshire Hathaway itself. Berkshire Hathaway at 881 uh, billion and Bitcoin at 1.28 uh, trillion. So this in, in itself would be reason perhaps to give Bitcoin a little bit more attention. Also another hint for Finance Guy, Buffett is managing 900 billion dollars worth of capital and there are only a small handful of companies worldwide that he can take a significant stake in whereas Bit Finance Guy as he says on Twitter is managing a hundred thousand dollars he probably shouldn't care what Buffett is investing in because his potential opportunity set is much larger than Buffett's because he's investing a much smaller amount of money. We can see who else that Finance Guy looks up to, like it or not. There's a reason why Dave Ramsey is the number one financial instructor. I think this is a really sad state, uh, sad commentary on the state of financial education in the US because Dave Ramsey really doesn't have any intellectual curiosity whatsoever. You can read his article about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really hard to understand and its value is all over the map. That's basically his conclusion. I would suggest a finance guy that's probably not a great idea to listen to old and out of touch guys like Buffett and Ramsey when it comes to modern technology. Buffett was about 20 years late to Apple and Dave Ramsey is a complete buffoon and a baboon in my opinion. Finance guy goes on to assert, Bitcoin is so advanced, yet I still can't go to the grocery store and buy food with it. It's funny that he got a community noted on this one. I would say, though, I would encourage him to look a little bit wider. You can buy, certainly buy nice things in Costa Rica using Bitcoin here in Bitcoin Jungle. You can buy meat and dairy and wonderful tropical fruits and vegetables. Here in the U.S. itself, you can buy wine with Bitcoin from Ben. You can buy beef with Bitcoin from Jason. And I'll also link to this Bitcoin map that allows you to find places to buy things with Bitcoin worldwide. So I think it's an unfair critique that Finance Guy has. If we take a look at his financial principles for success, these seem fairly sound. Uh, save money for children's ed education, uh, build a $1,000 emergency fund, save a three to six month emergency fund, etc. I think saving money is obviously a good idea. That's great advice. Spend less than you earn and invest the rest. This is something that's widely known. But I would say, and I would correct Finance Guy and tell him that I don't think it's very wise to save in a money that someone else can easily print more of as the Fed can and does with the US dollar. If Finance Guy had a little bit more intellectual curiosity, he would investigate and ask, him, ask himself, what exactly is money? What is fiat money? How does it work? Why is it that it doesn't preserve its purchasing power over time? How is it used to secretly fund outrageous government budget deficits, etc.? So it's not very wise to save into money that someone else can easily print more of. I think people should be saving in Bitcoin, which no one can print more of. And so I would correct his advice to say, spend less than you earn, stay humble, 
and stack sats. Ultimately, it looks like Finance Guy did not have a very good experience with the Bitcoin community. It may be because he came in with very ignorant takes and throwing punches left and right. Not very nice punches either, not very impressive punches. Bitcoin bros would rather insult someone than have a conversation. It's sad that the future of technology and money has such a vile community. Bitcoin sees people come and go, especially finance guys come and go. Here's an article from a finance professor from December of 2018. Worthless Bitcoin is entered death spiral. And here's a professor at Santa Clara University. This was when Bitcoin was trading around $7,000. So be, be careful of listening to TradFi guys. Be careful of listening to finance guys. I used to be one myself, and that's why I know that until people put in the time to understand Bitcoin, they will come up with really, really bad takes as I used to do and as Finance Guy is doing today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.